This song is called Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph in the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King. Glory to Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. In time, late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, Hail the incarnate deity, pleased as man with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, a glory to the newborn King. Oh yes. Hail the heavenly Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. A high light and life to all he brings. Risen with healing in his wings. Light and life to all he brings. Risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory down, born that man no more may die. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Oh yes, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Uh, okay. Come, desire of nations, come, fix in us thy humble home. Raise the woman's, rise, rise the woman's conquering sun. Bruise in us the serpent's heel. Uh, Adam's likeness not, now he face mm -mm, something went. Okay. Rise the woman's conquering seed, bruising us the serpent's head. Adam's likeness now he face. All oh, gracious Adam's likeness now he face. Stamp thine image in its play. That there's the rest of it. I mean that's how it rhymes. We've got to make sure understand all that. Okay. In us the humble holy son. Um, rise the woman's conquering seed. Bruise in us the serpent. He had Adam's likeness now he face stamp thine image in his place. 
second and from up above, reigns in us, uh, reign in us all of thy love. No, it, it's not. It's a, a second Adam from above. Reinstate us in thy love. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Boy, what a beautiful song. I'm going to memorize it. I'm going to memorize it where I can sing it. <laughs> I can look up to heaven and sing it, and not have to look at notes. It uh, this one's called it came upon the midnight clear. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old from angels bending touch to the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, good will to men, from heaven's all gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the globe and skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled. And still their heavenly music floats. Or all the weary world above its sad and lonely, lonely plains, they bend on hovering wings, and ever o'er its babble sounds the blessed angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on. By prophets long foretold, when with the ever circling years comes round the age of gold, when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendor fling, and all the world send back the song which now the angels sing. Whoa, how glorious is that? The whole world is going to send back that angel song, the song that the angels are now, now singing. Woo, my Lord, or the, that what they were singing over baby Jesus. They said, oh, yes, now these songs are not just for Christmas, but Christmas is coming quickly. We'll have to do our shopping in October because all this nonsense is going on. There may not be anything there. <laughs> and so we got to get out there and get our... Get it all taken care of in October. You know, that's about as long as we can push it back up. And uh, because, you know, and then if you have to have things delivered and things like that, you know. Oh, man. I mean, ain't no telling what's going to happen this year, you know, with all this stuff that's going on. And the prices are going to be rising higher and higher. Woo, better get started on it. So, but anyway, but these are not just for Christmas only. I'm going to start now to practice to get them down good by Christmas. But it's not just for Christmas. This is our message for all time. A message for all time. And, and they just happen to be regulated. You know, people just decided that, well, that sound better. sound good at Christmas. And it caught by that, it caused them to, you know, last longer, I guess. And, and so, but just think about that. You know, it says, um, uh, this is a uh, hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king, you know, they, the angels knew who he was. You know, a lot of them tried to deny it and everything, say he wasn't the Messiah and everything. But the angels knew that he was he, not only Messiah, but he was going to come as a, as the king of the new kingdom of God. And he was going to be the king and eventually during the millennium be the king to reign over everything. And everyone will have to, uh, every knee will bow then. And he will be the king for a thousand years and then we'll go to heaven and all, uh, back to heaven. We'll come down for the thousand years and then we'll go back. And so as uh, but uh, peace. Uh, mm -mm, what a glorious times are coming. Peace on earth. But he says peace on earth and mercy mild. You know, that means he's uh, he is just extending his mercy Gently and with that, what we were talking about, that pity, you know, that amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. He was extending his mercy, uh, 
is mercy unknown and mercy without degree and so on like that. God and sinners to reconcile. He was ready to reconcile the sinners to himself, but then a lot of them just rejected him, and then they finally just hung him on the cross. And oh my God, the, the king of the world that will one day be real and reign for a thousand years over the world and there won't be anybody else that you know reigning anywhere or anybody that hold can ever uh, accept those that they'll all have to the knee will have to bow and so it'll be a a reign of jesus as king uh he said joyful all ye nations rise join the triumph in the skies, well, you know, the triumph is that Jesus was born, but then there'll be another triumph in the skies, you know, when the rapture and all that happens. But but this one is uh, the triumph of the skies uh, and width when they were proclaiming that Jesus was now born at last. Join, so we should join that triumph of the skies with and with angelic hosts, along with an angelic host, proclaim that Christ is now born in Bethlehem. And we need to keep proclaiming that he has been born. And uh, the coming king. Hark the herald angels sing, Lord, and the newborn king. And then Christ by highest heaven adored. He's adored by highest heaven. Ooh, my, 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 my. You see, you know, Christ... Uh, Christ, the everlasting Lord. He's going to be the, he's not going to be another one. This is going to be the everlasting Lord. He's the everlasting Lord. The everlasting Lord, the everlasting King, and all of it. Oh, my goodness. And late in time, late in time, behold him come. He, you know, it had been several number of centuries gone by. Uh, several uh, several millenniums that had gone by, but, you know, but then he came. So it says, late in time, behold him come. He did come, offspring of a uh, of a virgin's womb. He came in a virgin's womb, meaning that, you know, he was born of a of, of God and, and not of an earthly father. Bailed, but then he was bailed in flesh. The Godhead see, bailed in the flesh, but, but we could see the, the Godhead in him. Held the incarnate deity. He was an incarnate deity. That's what we always have to remember. We tend to lose sight of that. You know, and start just thinking of, well, you know, he did good things. He was a good man and so on like that. But we got to remember he was the incarnate, you know, in the flesh, deity in the flesh. A deity more. He was a, a total deity, the fullness of the Godhead body in the flesh. And even though veiled in the flesh, that was the fullness of the Godhead bodily and all the things that he did and everything that he did. And then it was a total Godhead bodily that died on that cross that they crucified for Pete's sake. They crucified him, the incarnate deity, the Godhead body. They had come as a Godhead body, the coming king, the king that was to come, that was to save the uh, children of Israel and uh, all of the all of those people, and, and they were going to bring in the going to bring in that kingdom. Would have brought in that kingdom at that time, the king, and he would have reigned as king, and he would have started the millennium at that time and everything. But instead of that happening, they nailed him on a cross, and then they were dispersed to all the nations of the world. And it took two thousand years for them to ever start, even start coming back to uh, with their homeland. My, 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 what, what we can get into when we, <laughs> we do that, you know, crucifying exactly the wrong person. Oh, my, my, my. Woo! People in a lesser sense doing that even today, but, but when they did that, though, they crucified the Lord of glory. You know, oh, my, the one that was the, uh, what does it say, uh, uh, all in high, he was, by highest heaven adored, adored, and they, the one that was by highest heaven adored, they nailed him to a cross and spit on him, and tore his class lots for his garment. The sign, the garment, it might have been the same one, but the, the garment probably that the one that the woman said, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, she touched the hem of that garment, 
and was healed of that issue of blood. Oh, yes. And, and uh, other many others that touched his garment were healed. And and they cast light, lots for that, gambled over that, who was going to get that robe. And, oh, my, 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 my. Of course, they, they wasn't getting it for the purpose of being healed or, or even making uh, uh prayer clause or anything like that you know they were just getting it because they want to i guess sell it for the money you know or you know, whatever like that you know and so oh man what a what a man what a, what a, how far man had gone down pleased as man with men to dwell he was pleased to dwell with us jesus our emmanuel god with us emmanuel god with us god was with us god was here on earth with us Woo, my Jesus. And then, oh, my, I better not sing at the cross again. <laughs> and I put that in going that uh, it was God with us on that cross. And, oh, that, you know, amazing pity and grace and love, love beyond the green and everything. Woo, my Lord, I'm going to start crying. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Jesus, my Lord. You're mm -mm -mm. saying, you know, it's, messes up sometimes when I when I put a pause in it, especially if I put too many in. So if it wasn't for that, I'd pause it and start crying and, and praying. Uh, uh, oh, right now, boy, and I'd start shouting and everything. Oh, I'm running. Oh, but I would be crying and weeping, but I got to keep it on because, and you know, like I did, I made a, I made a real nice two-hour, you know, Bible lesson there, you know, last night. And another thing, uh, didn't have time to go and th I'm do it again and thing th uh, uh, come out showing that it had uh, recorded uh, 20, 21 hours of nothing on there. And, uh, of course, that, uh, that's not going to work when you put it on because they're going to take it when you try to upload it. They're going to take it. It's 21 hours. And and if it did, if, if they if they upload it at all, it, you know, they'd take 21 hours to uh to uh, uh, or nearly 21 hours to upload it because it takes um well it takes about 75 percent of the time that's on the video to, to upload it and so not only would i had to wait a whole day to get it uploaded but then there it would be with nothing on it and nothing on the last uh, 18 hours of it but when they see that they first day what they do is first they will Go ahead and record your two hours. It was over two hours that I did of all kind of singing and beautiful stuff. And they'll record that two hours and all first. And then uh, it'll be uploaded. And it'll be, uh, well, it'll either be uploaded or it'll be, it'll say, you know, it's something about it. it'll say uploaded. But then when it goes to process, I don't know if it got it all, uh, if they do all 20 hours of uploading or, or what, but anyway, when it goes to processing, then they'll say, well, we can't process that, you know, it's too long, and, uh, and, and of course, I don't blame them, you know, if it's that long, you know, who wants to process something to 21 hours long, so anyway, so I have to be careful about that, so I can't turn it off and, and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, and cry that right now over this, uh, but, um, uh, Oh, you know, I was just thinking, I was thinking, you know, I was doing all that two hours and 15 minutes, I think it was, and I was thinking, and I paused it two or three times, and I said, well, you know, this is, this is just, this is it's almost as good as, as live, because I can just uh, do a little bit, and then I can, if I have to do something, I can pause it, and then, and then I don't have to go back and, 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 uh, and set it all up again and everything, you know, I can just leave it on pause and then come back and then just keep going and maybe do three or four hours, I don't know, and then upload it. But <laughs> I better not do three or four hours, though, because then, you know, I could lose all three or four hours. But it says, uh, uh, man with man to dwell, Jesus, our Emmanuel. Uh, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Mm -mm -mm. Glory to the newborn king. And then it said, Hail the heaven born prince of peace. Hail the heaven born prince of peace. Uh, Hail the son of righteousness. You know, you hear some big old choir saying this, you know, and I tried listening to some of that, you know, and you don't hear anything but the chorus. I mean, 
they just go through, and uh, you never, I never knew all this was in here, and you just hear it, you know, it's just kind of like, and then they come down to the course, and, and then they'll hark the herald, and you, you can kind of understand that, but they run their, you know, they just blur their words like crazy, you know, that when they're, uh, uh, hail the heaven-born prince, hail the heaven-born prince of peace, hail the son of righteousness, light and life to all he brings. Mm -mm -mm. He brings light and life to everyone. Oh, my, 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 light and life he brings. I mean, even those, you know, what we got to realize, that even the people that don't accept Christ and those of other religions and everything else, uh, the world is a, such a much of a better place and so much more light and so much more towers of light shining because of Jesus Christ dying on the cross that even helps them and affects them and makes civilization better and them more prosperous, more prosperous even though they don't accept him as their savior. We got to realize that, you know, we, we keep the lighthouse of Jesus in this country. It's going to make it prosper, more prosperous for everybody. You know, you don't want to believe in Jesus and he is dead here or anything like that, you know, then the things that's bringing you yourself, the prosperity is going to be undercut. Oh my, people just don't realize that. Arisen with, Healing in his wings. He's got healing in his wings. When he rose from the dead, he rose with healing in many different facets of healing. He rose. Healing of sin and sickness and death and all the rest of it. It was in the wings he rose upon. Woo! Okay, so it, but it says mild, my, very mild and humble. It means that he lays, he laid his glory by. Set aside all that glory. He said, well, I'm going to set aside that glory. You know, just like we see in some, some films, you know, like uh, Highway to Heaven or something. <laughs> Not near the same glory, but it's kind of uh, you know, kind of like what this, in a sense, means. We're, uh, uh, what was saying, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, Jonathan, the one that was Charles Engels in the Little House on the Prairie. And he, he says, uh, no, I'm not going to use the power that I have. I'm going to be here as a man, and and then, but every once in a while, the Lord gives him a dispensation, grants him the, the uh, uh, that he can use his power. Uh, but the other times, he goes ahead and puts up with everything, you know, that he wouldn't have to otherwise. Well, Jesus, like that, he laid down his his glory and said he would not bring that, and he would not call twenty thousand, uh, two thousand. He would not call ten thousand angels to to take the nails out of his hand, take him off the cross and everything like that. But he would go ahead until he died on that cross. And so he laid his glory down and then he uh, uh, he was born then that man no more would uh, uh, would die. And of course, that shows part of that love, that 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 undying mercy and that uh, that amazing pity, grace, unknown, love beyond degree, because he was willing to do without that, lay down that power that he could have had and and die for us as a, a man uh, in a man's uh, body and all like that when he would come down from glory and uh, born born the, to raise the sons of, of earth, you know, to find those that would accept him and they would give given the power to become sons of God. He would raise them up and make them uh, so, uh, uh, holy sons of God to, to one day ri uh, uh, rule and reign. Oh, yes, born to give them second birth. A second birth, a new birth. A new birth is a son of God. Oh, my, my, how marvelous all this is. Uh, I said, Hark the hell angels and glory to the newborn king. Yes, we say. Okay, it says, Come, desire of nations, come. The desire that every, all the nations were looking toward. Everyone in one form or another was looking for a Messiah to come and save the world from all the evil and every corruption and all that kind, kind of thing, you know. And all of them, a lot of them didn't know that it was going to be a. Uh, be Jesus, and he was going to be come to the Jews, and he was going to be start the church and all that kind of thing. But they were looking for uh, some kind type of a savior, some type of Messiah to release them from the evil that they were in. And a lot of the countries, a lot of the countries were they were enslaved and other things, and a lot of disease and illness and other kind of thing. But it says, "Fix in us that 
of a home. He's willing now through the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. The Holy Spirit, second person of the Trinity, is willing to dwell in us. And Jesus, well, in Jesus too, through the Holy Spirit, is dwelling in us. He's willing to dwell in us now. Mm -mm -mm. My, my. And rise the woman's conquering seed. You know, the one that was predicted to bruise the head of, the, of Satan. Uh, that the woman's seed would bruise his head. Way back there, that was told way back there in uh, the third chapter of, uh, of Genesis. Or, you know, I believe it was the third or even before. As a woman's conquering seed uh, bruises, bruise in us and then helps, even gives us the power then to finish the job, bru uh, to, the, <coughs> to uh, uh, work with him, so to speak, uh, to bruise, the, uh, bruise in us the serpent's head. That we would be part of that bruising the serpent's head. Adam's likeness, now to his face, you're going to erase Adam's likeness and give us that likeness of God again, like we had uh, had before, and stamp thy image in his place. They're going to take that image out of Adam, you know, and sin and everything, and going to place the image of Jesus Christ in us. Stamp thy image in his place. Second Adam from up above, reinstate us in thy love. Reinstate us in thy love. We're back in his love. Oh, my, 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 my. No longer considered sinners, but all oh, now we're considered the loved, very loved and beloved sons of God himself. Oh, my. How glorious is it? Mm, mm, mm. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Ooh, my, my. Mm -mm -mm. And then this was called, it came upon the midnight. Well, we sang it. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old. From angels bending to touch the earth. They bent all the way from heaven down to touch the earth. Oh, yes. And then when they when they got all the way down, you know, and then to the earth, then they started playing their harps. Ooh, my, 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 my. They bent with their harps and all down, harps of golden harps, and started singing uh, praise to God and to Jesus and coming, the Son of God, and uh, peace on earth, goodwill to men. You know, as uh, had they all accepted him, you know, there would have been goodwill all over the earth, and it would have remained that way from, you know, goodwill to men from heaven. So heaven's, heaven's all gracious king, he who sits upon the throne in heaven, the all gracious king, the world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Everybody, everything got quiet over the earth to hear those angels. Oh, man, everybody got quiet for a while to hear, you know. They said, but then uh, they were not pleased, uh, you know. They, they, uh, they were uh, pleased that, uh, to have him being born, but then when he didn't become the kind of king they thought, well, then they were not pleased. And uh, they thought that he was going to, that there would be somebody that would uh, <laughs> would not call them hypocrites, but would say, y'all are so holy, and you're going to be <laughs> sitting on my right hand. <laughs> you going to put all the Pharisees into uh, the kingdom, and they'd all be ruling and reigning <laughs> and the Sadducees. But they didn't realize how far they'd gotten away from God, you know, that he had to, uh, rise a new uh, bunch of people <laughs> and so but that's what they so they were not pleased and so but still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled oh, just imagine that all them angels coming down and unfurling their wings oh you know they're great wing great large wings mm -hmm. oh and i felt those flutter of those wings and all oh, large great large wings Oh, my, 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 my. And still their heavenly music floats over all the weary world. It still floats even to this day. It was so great. That music was so sweet and so wonderful. It still floats. It still floats. And still, oh, people still, it, it, it's instilled in people such a, a image of joy and peace and happiness and everything else that it just continued on and on and people floating up on the earth and forever changed the world. Oh, my, 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 my. Woo! Above its sad and lonely, uh, lowly 
planes, they been on hovering wing, hovering wings. You know, that's like a butter, uh, like, like a, uh, a, uh, a monkey. Uh, it's like a, uh, well, the ones that like the sugar, you know, uh, the uh, little, uh, the little bitty tiny hummingbirds, yeah, it's like a little hummingbird hovering, you know, how they hover, you know, come up there, you know, to the, to the feeder, and, uh, you know, instead of like, you know, you see the other birds flying and landing and flying, and, and they'll be, come out there, you know, because they got to, they stick that long uh, beak there, you, they got like a needle into that uh, feeder, and they'll just hover there, you know, just like a helicopter or something, just hovering still, but just still right in front of that, and then they'll start gradually going towards it, and uh, uh, they're just hovering in space, just suspended there in space, and says so that's like those angels, they were hovering, they and they bend down on hovering wings, and, you know, touch the earth, and, and all, and, uh, oh my goodness, such a marvelous thing, ooh, 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 ever or it's, and then all, ever or it's babble, all of it's nonsense and everything, and all the nonsense going on, he says that the ba over its battle, babble sounds that the blessed angels sing, and the things that they sung was so great that they overshadowed all that, and it was so much better than all the babble that was normally heard. Everybody hushed and, and listened, and it says, For lo, the days are hastening on by pro prophets long foretold, when with the ever circling years would come around the age of gold. They said it would eventually get here, and the millennium will will eventually get here when there is a peace and prosperity for all for, and uh, for uh, a thousand years on the rule and reign of Jesus Christ. When peace shall o'er the, all the earth its ancient splendor bling, mm -mm, the splendor of peace, and all the world will then, they'll send back They'll all be singing like the angels sing. They'll all send back the song which now, you know, only the angels sing. We'll, they'll be singing. We'll all, the whole world will be singing it. Woo! My, 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 my. But in a little bit, I'm going to have my, the healing broadcast. And, uh, and this, uh, this will be uh, he, uh, uh, Healing Love. I'm going to start a new series called Healing Love. And, uh, this will be healing love number one when I get through singing here. And um, <laughs> I don't know how long to go. I don't want to go so long that it won't, uh, that, that in the case I lose another couple of hours, you know. And uh, But um, I want to sing a few more songs. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and it applies to these these two songs. Um, and then we, you know, we sing about the birth of Jesus, sing about the angels singing, and all the things that's going to happen, the millennium, and everything else. And and so this one is called "Who Am I?" It says, "When I think of how He came so far from glory, woo! Just think about that in the context of the, you know, all that the, the heavenly the angels were singing, and Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and." All that kind of thing up on that midnight clear and everything. And then this is a, this one is who am I? When I think of how he came so far from glory, came and, and lived down above the. Well, okay, so now I got it. When I think of how he came so far from glory, came and dwelt among the lowly, such as I, <clears throat> suffering shame and such disgrace, on Mount Calvary took my place. Then I asked myself the question, who am I? Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would pray that my will died for? The answer I may never know. Why ever love me so that to an old cross 
Ik hoop aan u heel erg. Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would say, not my will, thine for? The answer I may never know. Why ever love me so? And o'er a cruel, cruel cross he'd go. For who am I? Okay, uh, well, uh, I may have already the whole business. Okay, he had, um, when I'm, when I'm reminded of his words, I'll leave you never. If you'll be kind, I'll give, if you'll be t true, I'll give to you life forever. I know there's nothing I will ever, could have ever done. To deserve God's only Son, to fight my battles until they're won, for who am I? Who am I that a king would live and die for? Who am I that he would say, not my will thine for? The answer I may never know. Why ever love me so that to an old cruel cross he'd go for who am I? When I think of how he came so far from glory, came and dwelt among the lowly such as I, he suffered shame and such disgrace. On Mount Calvary took my place. Then I asked myself the question, Who am I? Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? Who am I that he would pray not my will thine for? The answer I may never know. Why ever love me so that a old cruel cross he'd go for who am I? Or to the old rugged cross he'd go for who am I? When I'm reminded of his words, I'll leave you never. If you'll be true, I will give it to you life forever. I know there's nothing I could have done to deserve God's only son, to fight my battles until they're won. For who am I? Who am I that a king would live and die for? Who am I that he would pray, not my will thine for? The answer I may never know. Why ever love me so, that to an old rugged cross we could go, for who am I? Oh yes, and so he was able, through his amazing pity and his grace unknown and his love beyond degree, to die for us. And oh yes, and so the author of this song had a, who am I that he would, well it was because of his grace, you know, because of his undying grace, because of his um, Amazing pity and his grace unknown that though he didn't deserve him dying for us and his uh and his uh love without degree that while we didn't deserve him dying for us he still had enough love and enough grace and enough pity and heart to come and lay down his glory and die on the old cruel cross and the old rugged cross for us and that should really humble us and make us think about who we are and, and uh, what we need to do and oh my 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 you know and so. And uh, this one is called He Lives. I, he, I, I, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what men say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice divine. And so it's the time I need him 
He's always there. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along that narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading well through all the stormy blast. The days of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along that narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how he, I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who serve him. The help of all who find. So none other is so good. Worthy, none other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along that narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Ooh, he lives within my heart. Oh, yes, amen. Praise God. <laughs> oh, and uh, this was called Where the Soul Never Dies. And so uh, now we're going into Canaan's land. To Canaan's land, I'm on my way where the soul never dies. My darkest night will turn to day where the soul never dies. No sad farewell, no tear dim eyes. Where all is love and peace and joy, and the soul of man never dies. Oh, yes. And all roses blooming there for me, where the soul never dies. And I will spend eternity where the soul never dies oh no sad farewells no tear dim eyes where all is love and the soul never dies and the soul never dies i am on my way to that fair land where the soul never dies where there will be no parting hand, and the soul never dies. No sad farewell, no tear dim eyes. There all is love and joy, then the soul never dies, and the soul never dies. Oh, praise God. Oh, yes. Okay, so this one's just called the solid rock. Uh, my my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but 
Holy lead, oh Jesus' name. On oh, Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When, when darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In Every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds me behind the ba- within the bell. Oh yes, and on Christ the solid rock I stand. No other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood. Support me in the uh, whelming flood when all around my soul gives way. He then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with Trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found. Rest in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. The ground is sinking sand. Oh, yes. And so, yes, we. Um, all is love. And so, Christ is solid rock. We stand upon a solid rock which cannot fail. And everything can be sinking all around us. Everything's sinking sand, and the longer we live, we, the longer we live, the longer we see that everything around us is just, you know, can just be just sink down, like sinking sand. But that solid rock is always there. That truth of Jesus and what He's done for us, and the salvation He provides, and going to heaven, and all that, all of that stands like a solid rock amid amidst all of the turmoil and all of the sinking sand around us. And we can always count on that solid rock of Jesus Christ to give us the truth and provide us with joy and happiness and peace and all the rest of it. So it's a wonderful solid rock. It's a, a rock that we can stand on, that, uh, that we can uh, build our hope upon, which will never let us down. And so we... Uh, dare not trust the sweetest frame, but lean on Jesus' name. And then when darkness would seem to hide his face, we know that it's really not that we just have to rest on his unchanging grace. That his that as we uh, kind of have gotten away from uh, from the uh, uh, from seeing that joy and that happiness and everything, and the understanding that Jesus is there and all that. Uh, we just rest on his grace to bring us back and begin to pray and rest on his grace. And we will again understand the glory of God and it will the joy and the happiness will again return and will again, again set us on fire with a passion of love for Jesus. It will come back. Oh, yes, sir. Every time that we rest on his grace, he, he will give us joy and happiness and peace. In every situation, in every high and stormy gale, my my anchor rests within the veil. It, it within that veil around the holy of holies uh, and the holiest of holies. We are have a anchor within that very veil where God is. He has our anchor, and God is holding that anchor, and we cannot but uh, fall out into the storm and be lost be, uh, from uh, our direction because our our anchor is holding within the veil. There's a, a lot of uh, several books, series of books, and different things called uh, the Great Anchor and things like that. The, uh, and the, the Anchor of Salvation and the, the Anchor of Eternal Life and all like that. How anchored we are 
in the grace of God, if we believe in the grace of God and we accept the grace of God, like Ephesians 2 and 8 says that for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves is a gift of God. If we turn to God, we say, I know it's not of myself. It is your gift. I accept your gift uh, of eternal life and, and I vow to serve you and, and, uh, and, uh, and I confess you all the time and, and I believe in you, Jesus, and all like that. Well, then that grace reaches down and says, yes, I know you can do none of it on your own, but my grace saves you through the blood of Jesus Christ when you believe in it and get under that blood of Christ. And that grace saves you and puts your anchor. And your anchor then is he grabs your anchor and puts it and sets it permanently down into uh, that blood of Jesus and into that holy of holies there. And it can never be pulled out again. And you have seen enough of the light and you have enough of the seed of God that he's always going to give try you start drifting off from it. He's always going to be leading you back in that direction and always going to be sending out more signals to you. And everything will begin to land upon you to show you how wonderful your salvation is and how your anchor is holy. And oh yes, and so we are predestinated to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. All those that are called and he also justified and all the justified, he also uh, glorified. And so our anchor is there until such time as we will be glorified. And oh my, my, the anchor of the soul. I think that's what it's called, the anchor of the soul. There's several books written on things like that. Oh, my, 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 my. Uh, who was it that wrote that? Uh, wasn't Billy Graham. The Anchor of the Soul. I'll think of it in a minute. But uh, anyway, so our soul is anchored there. And so when darkness hides its face, uh, I cling to his unchanging grace in every, every, uh, in every uh, high and stormy gale. My anchor holds within the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood, all of that. He had made an oath and he made a covenant with us and his blood and everything else that we were washed in supports me in the whelming flood. All that stuff comes against us. Then we're supported by his blood and by his uh, grace and by his covenant and by his oath and by his love. And when all around my, uh, around my soul gives way, he then is all of my hope and stay. And we're completely stayed to that, completely anchored to that blood, and that cannot change. And we cannot, uh, we cannot stray uh, so far that God will not pull us back in. Oh, Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Where He, when He shall come, then with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness. Still, you know, we'll be trusting in his righteousness, in his blood, above the, uh, in his uh, righteousness alone, so that then, in that way, we're faultless to stand before the throne. Mm -mm -mm. And so we have a solid rock that we can stand on. Oh, thank you. Thank you, my dear blessed Jesus, for all of that. Mm -mm -mm. And so, uh, let me see. What else we need to sing? Okay, yeah, then Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Safe from wrath and make me pure. Oh, yes. Rock of ages, clip for me. Let me hide myself in thee. All the labors of my hands cannot meet thy law's demands. Could my zeal no respite, no, could my tears forever flow. All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Rock of ages, 
clip for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the waters and the blood from thy wounded side which float be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. While I draw this bleeding breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, and behold the old thy throne, Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the waters and the blood from thy wounded side which flow be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Naked came I to thee for dress helpless look on me for thee for grace naked come to thee for grace dress helpless look on thee for grace to thy fountain lord i fly wash me savior or i die rock of ages Clap for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin, the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Oh, yes. Yes, everyone that needs that salvation, Jesus is a mighty rock waiting and reaching out his hand to use them. That you can grab his hand and you can allow his salvation and be anchored beyond the veil, be anchored there with God himself, with holding you up and, and protecting you and, and uh, giving you all peace and joy. Oh, my, 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 my. And so uh, is this what it's called? Um, Oh, that's just called living by faith. I care not today what the morrow may bring, no shadow or sunshine or rain. I know that, uh, Lord, it ruleth over everything, and all of my weary is vain. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. From all I'm saying, in the sheltering arms, I'm living by faith, and I feel no alarm. That thou tempest, may, no tempest may blow, and the storm clouds arise, obscuring the brightness of day. I'm never alarmed. I'm never alarmed at the overcast skies. The master looks on at the strife. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. From all safe in the sheltering arms, I'm living by faith and I don't know what I'm Oh, yes. I'm living by faith and I feel no alarm. I'm feeling by pain, and I feel no alarm. At, uh, at the, um, no matter, let's see, 
Well, I thought I had. Oh, I know that the Savior will carry me through, no matter what evils be tied. Why should I then care if the tempest may blow, if the Savior is there by my side? Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. From all harm safe in his sheltering arms, I'm living by faith in the field of my Lord. If Jesus Living by faith. No matter what. I care not. If the tempest may blow. If Jesus walks close by my side. Our Lord will return to this earth some sweet day. Our troubles will all be o'er. Our Master will gently le- then lead us away beyond that blessed heavenly shore. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in His great love. From our sake in His sheltering arms, I'm living by faith and I feel no alarm. Oh, yes, years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not when it was me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Part of there was permanent, was multiplied to me. Here I burn down from liberty at Calvary. Oh, this one's called at Calvary, yes. Uh, and by God's word, at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I spurned. Oh, uh, then my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon now there was given up to multiply to me. There my burden so found liberty on Calvary. Oh, I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly owe him as my king. Now my rapture soul and only sing up. Calvary, mercy there is great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, and my, my guilty soul found liberty at Calvary, oh, oh there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Part of there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary, at, 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 there my burden so found liberty, at Calvary. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, what a Savior, this is called, once I was straying in sin's dark valley, no peace within could I find. Oh, they searched through heaven and found a Savior to save a poor lost soul like me. Oh, what a Savior! Oh, hallelujah! His heart was broken on Calvary. 
His hands were nailed, scarred, his side was riven. Oh, he gave his life blood for even me. He gave his life blood for even me. This chilly waters I'll soon be crossing. He will lead me safely or I'll join the chorus in that great city and sing up there forevermore. Oh, what a Savior! Oh, hallelujah! His heart was broken on Calvary. His uh, hand was nailed, scarred. His side was riven. He gave his life blood for even me. He gave his life blood for even me. Woo! Let's see. So I'll join the chorus in that great city and sing up there forevermore. Oh, yes, oh, yes. It's, a, it's about time for our, he, uh, our, oh, it's twice. There I got, uh, it's about time for our healing broadcast for our uh, course that we're starting now called uh, uh, Healing Love. And uh, we had just finished doing 100 of them on effective healing. And this is going to be even more effective. It's going to be healing love. That's uh, the most effective thing in healing. Oh, there's been a lot of things written about that. And a lot of things talked about that. And everything about how God's love is so effective in causing us to. And how he can reach down and illuminate our heart and soul and show the truth to us through his love. And all that he can raise us up in his love to see what all he accomplished for us on the cross. And so, and uh, we uh, will sing our little uh, healing song. God has the power to heal today and he will brighten up your day. Oh, liberty through Calvary. Stretch forth thy and believe in him reach out and touch his garments him you uh, our faith in god you shall be healed stretch forth thy hand unto the master he uh, uh, receive from him strength for your soul Stretch forth your hand in faith, believing he'll set you free and make you whole. Stretch forth thy hand unto the master, believe on him, receive from him strength for your soul. Oh, stretch forth thy hand in faith, believing. He'll set you free and make you whole. Oh, yes. And so, we, uh, our uh, course on, and I am so excited about beginning. And uh, we got plenty of time. <laughs> and if not, I want to get in so much more just really quick. I'll be back quickly if I don't get it all in or if I don't get enough. Oh, no, I tell you what, I'm so excited about this. And it's uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the lesson one on healing love. And we're going to use as a springboard and as a foundation for this, we're going to use those three principles which we were talking about, about amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. All of those define god's love and who he is when the bible says in first john three uh three and uh and and uh three and one and two you know behold what manner of love the father stolen which we should be called sons of god and we know what we shall be we should be like him when we see him as he is and then when he says in uh first john by four and eight uh god is love and and uh four eighteen uh, god perfect love casts out fear so when he says god is love then that is shows that God 
always eternally and uh, forever has amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. Forever and ever his love is beyond degree. We will never, even in eternity, will never exhaust our understanding of how great his love is. And I know it's hard to believe that love could be so great that we'll be We'll, we will be studying it, as it were, and learning about it all through eternity. Well, you know, because after all, God has been there trillions and trillions of years. Oh, my, just think about how much love you would have within that time. Mm -mm -mm. Woo, praise God. Oh, yeah, I've often said, you know, uh, a lot of good can happen in trillions of years. And then he's been there for trillions and trillions and trillions of years. Oh, so it's trillions of years of good that is built up, ready to pour out upon us. Trillions of years of all that good is ready to pour upon us. Trillions of years of all that love is ready to pour out upon us. And we look and see uh, the results of all that of when Jesus came, laid down his glory, and died on the cross for our, our, our sins, became a lowly man, and uh, and, and walked among us and, and lived among us, healed all of our sick and all that and sin and, and brought people to be born again and all that. And then he died upon Calvary's cross, shedding his last drop of blood, you know, like the song uh, to dream the impossible dream uh, to the last ounce of courage. He, he, he stretched himself to the last ounce of courage uh, out just through it, it surely through his uh, his love that he had for us and to clear to the last drop of blood. He loved us clear to the last drop of his blood. Woo, to the last drop, you know. My, my, my. Man, how, how much love would you have to the last drop if you were being tormented upon a cross? Oh, you know, and the people that was down there, that the ones that nailed you up there, how much love would you have for them to the last drop that fell? You know, and yet he said, forgive them for they know what, what they do. Ooh, man, love beyond degree and amazing pity. Even pity on those that drove those spikes into his hand. I can't even imagine that. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. And, uh, you know, the song <coughs> says he could have called 10,000. Well, the scripture does too. He could have called 10,000 angels. To set him free from that cross at any point, at any point that he wanted to be. He said, he, at any point, he could have said, well, that's enough. I don't want to pay this price anymore. And so come get me, angels, and take me down off of here. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of it. Not going to do it. <clears throat> but he just kept there, kept on with his love. His love kept sustaining him. And he kept on to the last drop of his blood and never threw in the towel, never gave up. And went ahead and paid the ultimate price. Ooh, my goodness. And, uh. Somehow or another, I don't know how it could have happened, but God somehow or another caused him to, you know, be so, uh, so uh, cl somehow or another uh, chain, uh, locked up into that human form that he was able to, within his mind, he was able to <clears throat> go to the point where he could actually say, well, I don't really know. If I'm even going to rise from the dead. Now, really deep down, I'm sure he solely knew that. But in times, he would, I'm sure his flesh would say, well, what if I, you know, if I don't, because he'd be turning to his flesh then instead of to his spirit. In his spirit, he knew, but then in his flesh, he'd be saying, you know, I might be doing all this for nothing. <laughs> you know, and, and, and yet, so why don't I just uh, test the angels, you know, and, and just call the angels and see if they come have them come take me down. But then he said, but then his love carried him through. Even in human form where the glory had been laid down and still in human form without all of the powers that he had in heaven, he was still had enough left, love left over to carry himself to the end upon that cross and, and shed his last drop of blood and also through faith that he would be resurrected on the third day. My, 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 my. Oh, yes. And so, you know, we don't know how all of that happened, but we know that it showed a love like we have never seen before. Mm -mm -mm. And so we have to build our, you know, the, the, the church upon that rock of that type of faith that Jesus had and that type of faith that Peter had to, to uh, 
uh, to begin to believe and confess that Jesus was the man, was the Son of God, and that He was the Messiah, believing to the end, and all oh, knowing there that He would be raising from the dead, and uh, and so we have to build our church upon that, and our faith upon that, and our understanding upon that, and we so we're going to build this, uh, you know, this course and this lesson on on healing love upon the amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree, knowing that that type of love is enough to take us through anything that that the old man downstairs throws at us, including sickness and sin and death and all the rest of it. And we know as we learn more and more about how great God's love is, we know that it is plenty great to provide healing power to us when we reach out and and in faith believing and uh, as Jesus said, asking you shall receive, but when you ask, ask in faith, believing, and whatsoever you say it, you shall have. And so we know then because of his love that he's provided a way and that we can say, and any time we can confess, I believe beyond all things that I will be healed. And we can reach up our hand and accept that healing, knowing that the love of God will sustain us. And knowing that the love of God will come through for us. And the love of God is not going to fail us. Oh, dear God, it will never fail. The love of God will never fail. And what the love of God can't heal, you know, we dare not trust anything else to heal either. Because the love of God is the greatest force on earth. And the love of God can heal anything. If we understand enough of about the love of God, we can heal anything, and anything can be healed, and uh, people can be healed of any disease that they're willing to reach far enough into that love of God and realize that it is love beyond degree. Woo! Oh, I wish I could pause this and jump and shout a while. Oh, just jump and shout and, and cry and all those things. But I want to make sure this one goes up. <laughs> so I'm not going to pause it. You know, I've come to, like a song said, I've come too far by faith, leaning on the Lord. I've come too far by faith, trusting in His Word. I've come too far on this video now to start pausing it. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> so I'll just have a sip. Go on. Oh, yes. A lot of the time, it'll work all right, you know. And I kind of just about decided that maybe it's the fact that because of that thing, it just won't hardly work with you when you try to reach up. If you, if I use the uh, mouse and all and just have to make sure that, you know, instead of trying to take a shortcut, just use the mouse and put that, you know, in the right place and, and, uh, and, and pause it that way, maybe that will... You know, because it kind of jerks around, you know, and it will kind of halfway pause and not complete, and then you have to hit it again, and sometimes you hit it and it doesn't do it, and a whole lot of the time you push the stop button, it doesn't stop, you know, correctly, and uh, and things like that, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, they it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful computer, you know, all the goods and everything, but they make, you know, everything has its little flaws, you know, and so uh, you have to deal with it, but... Uh, well, uh, one of these days I'm going to get busy and figure out, and, oh, well, I know how, but I'm going to get on live. You know, I'm just going to set this up on live and I'm going to come on here and do it all live. Oh, my dear Jesus. And, and then later on, worry about <laughs> whether or not I can put the live, whether or not I can upload the live. Well, you know, if it's up, if it's on live, you know, well. I don't think I'd have any problem uploading it onto the YouTube after that if it's been done live, you know. And so, of course, people doing live have a lot of problems, too, with that live messing up. And sometimes the sound going off and different kinds of things like that. Depends on which, which uh, service you use for the live. And so, um, uh, anyway, so where we was at on this was, okay, we're studying everything about the love of God. And I know a while back I had many years, well, it's quite a few decades ago, circled all the words for love in the Bible, and uh, I don't know, I think there's maybe, oh, good grief, you know, close to a thousand maybe, but there's quite a bit of the word, use of the word love, it's uh, it's all through the Bible, and uh, so, uh, but 
anyway, so we said grace unknown. Oh, no, we said pity. Yeah, grace. Uh, uh, amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. And uh, I've got that memorized. Something about looking at it, though. I'm going to look at it here written down. I think I'll hold it up again so people can write this down again. Uh, this is uh, what this was, this was in the song called At the Cross, written by a poetry in the year 1707 by a poem. Poet, by a poet in, in the year 1707. You know, he was born in 1760 uh, something, and uh, he was 33 years old in the year 1707, the same year, same age as Jesus Christ. And, and it was a year seven, which was the perfect year. So it was a perfect year to put out a poem like this. And, that, and he wrote this poem, and it was only later that it was put to music. So, and, and then it, it has this verse that, that mentions that uh, that the cross is ama shows amazing pity and it shows grace unknown and love beyond degree. What's the matter with that that it's not showing the whole thing? Like, ama uh, oh, here it is. Uh, amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree degree. Mm -mm -mm. So you need to get a notebook and write all those things down because I'm going to be referring to those a whole lot. And so what do you think amazing pity means? Well, how much pity does it take for it to be amazing? Well, I think that pity is just, you know, just like the song Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound, you know, it saved a wretch like me. It's enough pity to save a wretch like me. You know, and would that... Uh, sacred head devote or would he devote his sacred head for such a worm as me yes because of his pity his amazing pity he was willing and said in his he said to himself it's after praying for long hours and that nights and every night all night and all he said he said to himself the only way mankind is going to ever be saved is by me to having enough pity to die for even the worms of, of this world, to die for the worms, to divide for the wretches. That's the only way. And so I have to, because God has told me that, and I know that I can't get away from it. I know it. And I know that's the only way God has said that's the only way. I know that I have to have enough pity on those poor worms and wretches to die on that cruel cross. Woo, dear God, why are you telling me this stuff? <laughs> God saying this, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't even think about this. Oh my goodness. Woo, oh God. You know, but why did he die on that cross for such worms and such wretches? And he said, because it was the only way. You know, man had gotten so far away from God and made it into so much evil. And oh my goodness, you know, it was like Sodom and Gomorrah all over again. Where Sodom and Gomorrah, they had to destroy them, had to be destroyed. I see, I believe that was the ones that were destroyed by fire. And then and then they got evil again, and then he had to destroy them by the blood. And he did, you know, they just kept getting evil and evil. So finally, you know, God said, Well, Jesus, you know, <laughs> you know, my son, you know that the only way this world's ever going to be saved is if you die for them. You know, if you shed your blood to the last drop of, uh, you know, and uh, you and that you reach out to the last ounce of courage to save this old poor dying world. Otherwise, it's going to go from bad to worse till it destroys itself. And so he had he had pity on us as being such poor wretches and such worms that we could not see and even under we could not even understand what love meant. Much less have love for our neighbor and love for God. You know, he said the Ten Commandments saying you must love the Lord thy God with all your heart and soul and mind and in thy neighbor as thyself. But they were so darkened and so in sin and everything and so blinded that they could not even see what he was even talking about. You know, scribes and Pharisees proved that they they didn't even understand what that what that commandment was even talking about. You know, uh, they didn't understand what it was even talking about. When love the Lord thy God with all our heart and mind, they thought it meant put phylacteries across you and memorize all this law and go around advertising how you know more of the law than everybody else does. And they thought that was how they showed love to God. 
Oh, my, 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 the poor wretched lost souls. And, and, uh, so, and, and so, and then in love your neighbors yourself. Well, that was really beyond the, you know, that was totally beyond uh, everyone's head. And the only time anybody ever started loving the neighbors herself, uh, might near at least, uh, it was after Jesus died upon Calvary's cross. And that new, we don't realize how, a, how much of a new standard of love and a new definition of love and a new means of love and a new way to love. And everything was that happened upon that cross. Whoa, and how central it is. You know, I always wondered about that, you know, uh, where it said, you know, I had all of I had all of the Spurgeon sermons in these volumes and everything, and a lot of other sermons on grace and everything, you know. And, and um, besides, at one point, I didn't even really need those, but uh, that was sort of a foolish thing to do. But uh, to, to, to decide, but but uh, those ser- uh, all of those sermons of, of uh, Charles Spurgeon's, he, uh, one of the reasons why he became such a great preacher and everything was because he knew and understood at an early age and, and knew from then on uh, how that the cross was the central message. And because it defined love like nothing else did, that that love of God and God being love, like first John, like the Apostle John told us that, that God is love and that if you don't have love, you don't understand anything about it. You know, without love, you understand nothing, and you're nothing. And and First Corinthians thirteen, without love, I am nothing. I'm just a sink, just a uh, a clinging, um, uh, a banging, uh, and a clinging symbol. You know, a banging bell and a clinging symbol, without any kind of real harmony or sound or anything. And love has to come in to give that harmony, and that's the same way it is with our sickness and everything else. Love. A beyond degree like that has to come in to and give us that harmony in every sense of the word, physically, mentally, and spiritually. But but Charles Burton understood this, and so he every time he would start his sermon in the Old Testament or anywhere or in the latter part of the New Testament, he would always start it there, but then he'd always work back to the cross. And before he got to the end of the sermon, he was preaching on the cross, and he was bringing to asking people to accept that love that Jesus showed upon that cross to be saved, and so on. And so every one of them, and so everybody got to understanding that they were going to see the cross from a different viewpoint every time they heard another one of his sermons. And so that's what we have to do. We have to continually, in every scripture that we study, uh, tie it to uh, how it, it upholds the love of God and the cross of Christ and leads to the cross of, of Jesus. And then we start understanding the central place love has and all the unsurpassed love of God, you know. And, uh, and as some people have said, uh, as has been said before by some points, that he was a, it, uh, there is a great unity, a unifying force in love that brings everything else into harmony. Without love, there will never be any harmony. Nothing, all the rest of the things can't be brought into harmony unless there's the love to bring it into harmony. You know, and so 1 Corinthians 13 says, oh, the, the greatest of these is love, and I'll show you a better way, great, the greatest things of these is love, and it says, and abideth these three, uh, faith, hope, and charity, faith, hope, and love. You know, faith in love, and then the, <laughs> and then the hope in love, and, and understanding of love, all that, and so, and then there's the grace unknown, my, 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 the, you know, the, the, the pity, and then the grace that had never been known. And that poet that wrote the song recognized that that grace had never been known before. That kind of grace that would say, okay, I've, I've demonstrated my love before you, and now I am, I am willing to offer you eternal salvation if you will ex- look to the cross and accept that love and realize that, that, lo- that, that, that through my blood I paid that cost on, on that cross for your sins, and you will understand that and look to the unconditional love of God and recognize that and accept that and confess that and everything. I'm holding out that gift of eternal salvation through my grace. You know, no longer requiring, requiring every uh, odor of the law to be kept before you can receive salvation. But now you can receive salvation through faith and by grace uh, and that not of yourself. So that then you can see clearly to keep all of these things that you need to keep, you know, such as not committing adultery and not killing and not stealing and everything like that. And so God came at it from that viewpoint. 
And that was Grace Unknown because nobody had never known uh, anybody to uh, give such a great gift just by grace and not saying, well, I'm going to give you eternal life, but you're going to have to do such and such and such and such and such. Are you going to have to pay uh, $10,000 or a million dollars or something like that? Are you going to have to do, uh, you're going to have to, uh, <laughs> you're going to have to kneel down and walk upon uh, 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 rocks and everything uh, up into a certain holy place or something in order to then get that grace. Mm -mm, no, I didn't. Grace unknown. Love beyond degree. And love beyond degree, he, uh, you know, it's, uh, since it's love beyond degree, that means we got to, we got to spend as much time as we can looking at how, how great it is because we know you know, we had thought before, you know, we said, well, we, we understand the love of God. You know, we understand. We understand why Jesus died on the cross. And we understand he loved us. And we understand for God so loved the world. That's one of the first, that might have been the first verse that I memorized as a child. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but everlasting, have everlasting life. And so I said, well, I said, God created the world yes so i guess he loved what he created and i said well you know that's the love of god and that's what the love of god means it means is that love created god created the earth and then he loved the earth and and so uh so he so loved it that he gave his only begotten son and that's about as far as i went in my understanding of love and uh and then uh you read first corinthians 13 you get a little bit more understanding of it and you see john saying uh, God is love and that was real hard for me to understand for a long time because I knew that uh, God had created the earth and uh, God had created the universe he created done all these things and uh, and then he uh, uh, sent his son and he was with the fullness of the Godhead body was portrayed in his son and all these kinds of things and then he said if it says God is love well then I would take it and I would try to eliminate stuff and I'd say well, if it's if he's love, then he's not anything else. He's just love, and then you start trying to think, oh well, you know, maybe all it is is just a concept of love or something. But that's not what it's saying at all. It's saying, say, what he's saying by saying God is love. There, I'm, I'm sure you know if you research it out, good, you'll see that what he's saying there is that love is the greatest definition of God, the utmost quality. That is his utmost quality that he is love before he is anything else and everything else that he did he does through love and that's the way we have to be everything we do we have to consider love first everything we do we have to do through love and that's just like you know so then that applies to illness and disease and every, everybody that we attempt to pray for and everybody we attempt to heal of a disease or an illness it has to be done by love and we have to make sure that we have the love of god first before we just go out and say oh i think i'll become a healing evangelist you know? <laughs> i just think that looks like a good thing to do and i might be able to take in a lot of offers or something and we don't really love the people, you know. We don't really have the amazing pity or the grace. Of, we don't really understand the grace unknown or anything like that. We just understand it all. Oh, well, you know, it'd be nice to be a healer, you know. Just go out and heal people, you know, and all that. And, and uh, But we've got to first consider, do we understand hardly anything about the love of God? And do are we doing that healing ministry solely because we love people or, or are we doing it just to see them being healed and some people saying praise you for healing them you know <laughs> or we become a big shot for healing them uh, or are we doing it actually because out of love for the people that we want to see them heal because we love them as human beings and we are you know in a sense having a uh, having a, a sort of a divine pity and a, but combined also with an unconditional love and, and and all like that and we're looking to the cross and saying jesus i'm willing to go to the last ounce of my courage to see these people healed and and you you try to put all that into it and then you ask god to let that affect your bedside manner when you go into that hospital room and you know whether you're a doctor or you're a nurse or or a are you uh, going in as a minister or a healer or something else? You uh, just a minister and everything. You have that love so great 
that it emanates from you, and, you know, and it's almost like the patient sees light emanating from you, and we don't, and you don't go in there and and say it, things that would cause them to uh, doubt that love. You don't go in and you don't you don't talk about the disease or how bad it is or how you know how pitiful you are or you poor person or all them kinds of things. You go in there with faith that God's going to heal him and displaying that faith and that knowledge and have an absolute persuasion that they are going to be healed. But then at the same time, you don't just go in there, you know, and say, you see, this is the difference and what we need to understand about that. Look, you don't go in there and just say, well, you know, that's all in your mind. And, you know, you know, if you'll just say I'm healed, you'll be healed. And, uh, you, you know, and start, you know, lecturing them on, oh, that's that you. That's your fault that you're ill. You know, some people will do that. They'll say they'll say, well, the only way I can get them to see the truth is just to go in there and start, you know, uh, giving them uh, these abrupt statements and everything about how, oh, you, you know, to just get up out of that bed and walk off, you know, and, uh, or, you know, you don't go in there and just say, you don't even you don't even go in there and say rise or anything like that. You go in there uh, with with that faith and that understanding of that love on your heart and mind. But then when it comes to them, you go in there displaying love for them and consideration in every aspect of that love and consideration. Everything is, is love and consideration and, uh, you know, uh, willing to do whatever it takes and, and, uh, and then seeking to make them comfortable, not making a big deal about it, but, but making them comfortable the best that you can. And, uh, in, in everything, not in, in your saying I love you and all this, but in demonstrating by everything that you're doing that you do love them. And uh, and all the demonstration with every word that you say and by saying all the correct things. And, uh, and so then that becomes, and it becomes a second nature to you once you under, really understand and have that real love of God flowing then it becomes second nature to you to do that. And so then that's a, becomes, then you're, then you're showing a little bit of that love that's beyond degree. You know, you show it by things like patience and, you know, uh, humility and, you know, uh, you know, it's not like you're saying, oh, I know so much about this, you know, that I can, you know, tell you this or that, you know, but you're showing humility and meekness and you're, and you're just showing, a, uh, you're showing in everything from mannerism to everything else that uh, you're, you're, you're demonstrating and flowing uh, that uh, unselfish, totally, uh, totally godlike love that would be willing to do anything uh, to clear down to the last drop of blood to see them healed and let that show in your actions not in words, not in, not just in in words that you say, you know. And so, it's uh, not as if you all use words to talk them into it, but you demonstrate it more than you do it. There's few words. There's words that you'll say, but you'll demonstrate it more in your actions than you do in your words. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, so we have amazing pity, grace, unknown, and love beyond degree. And now, where was I on this? Mm -mm -mm. What uh, uh, Jesus was, let's see, was saying, okay. Oh, I was saying, well, yeah, so uh, I was talking about how that Jesus was, that's what he was saying to the Pharisees about their, uh, you know, knowing all the law and displaying everything and, and then uh, going out there and, and saying, well, I'm going to show love. I'm going to hold up this, you know, dollar bill or this $10 bill, or whatever it is, you know, or these, these shekels or these things that whatever they had. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to hold them up. And, and but then I'm going to have a trumpet player come and blow a trumpet just as I, okay, here you go. Do -do -do -do. Here you go. Here, here's your money. And, you know, and I, I'm doing that because of the love of God. But then you're getting all the credit for it and everything like that, too for doing that and they're making a big display out of it and all like that. So he was uh, telling them, you know, that that's not the real love of God. And so it's not all of our uh, demonstration and seeking for credit or, or going to the patient uh, in a way that we 
want to get credit for healing them or care if we get credit for healing them or whether we just plant a seed and then somebody else comes along later and they're healed in or anything like that, but that we are just willing to play our part in bringing them to the healing, uh, the knowledge of the healing power and receiving the healing. And knowing and understanding by our demonstration how to reach out and get it. Oh, praise God, you know. You know, maybe uh, you might give testimony of healings that you have had in, in your life if you do it in a humble way, not in a preachy way. You know, testify about something that God healed you of and all, and that might help a little. And things like that, you know, just different things like that. Uh, but all the while, mainly demonstrating the love of God. And uh, so we uh, will need to go to, pr yeah, it's about, just about time to go to prayer. And let's see, what else do I need to, and then we will come back uh, sometime within the next 24 hours and do the healing, uh, uh, healing love lesson number two. You know, and so, uh, I'm going to try to get to a Bible lesson on the New Testament tonight sometime. But if I, but I got the one I did before got, you know, you know, ruined, as I said, you know. And so whether I'll have a time or not, because I was attempting to change it to earlier in the morning. And I had a real good time, had a real good lesson on there and everything, and it got ruined. But we will see what we can do. But we will be but certainly be back here tomorrow with another uh, lesson on uh the healing love, and we'll be back sometime tomorrow also with with the uh, New Testament study. So we'll try to be doing all of those as we can. And um, But just keep in mind that this love that we're talking about is beyond, totally beyond our understanding, totally beyond our degree at this point, uh, totally out, be, so beyond degree that it's beyond all of our understanding, but that we are... We, but we see it as something we are moving toward and we're seeking to, mo to move toward more and more. And so we're starting here and we're moving toward it. We're moving toward a further understanding and we're looking at that cross and asking ourselves every day, you know, and like that, oh, what a savior and everything else. Like, uh, why would he die for, uh, for me? And why would he, uh, Nothing good could I have done to deserve thine own, uh, only son. And, uh, oh, what a savior. Um, let's see how that go. What a sa Oh, what a savior. He gave his lifeblood for even me. Um, and uh, how can I, something about how can I understand that and seek to understand why as best we can that he did that. And then just begin to look at it like, uh, like the, uh, at the cross says, uh, what would he devote? Would he actually? What he meant was saying was, would he actually devote that sacred head, that head full of glory and everything else, to save a uh, to uh, that actually devote that sacred head for such a worm as I, and try to understand why that he would lay down his glory and go to the cross, and and how that that becomes. An amazing pity that was never known before, and a grace unknown, and it, and it demonstrates a love that was beyond all of our understanding. Just like it says about that peace that passes all understanding, this is love beyond all of our understanding. But we're attempting to move toward it so that we can understand more of how that love heals, and we can gain more of the healing power. But the love, as I said, is the harmonizing force. And so we have to understand the love in order to bring everything in harmony where we have the joy of healing and the peace that passes understanding of healing. We have the peace and the joy and the rivers of living water and all that flowing out of our innermost being. And we have that tremendous uh, power of the promises of God and that tremendous power of being a born again Christian and all those things that God gives us by grace and knowing that we're the sons of God. Oh, they're now, beloved, now we're the sons of God and that we, we will shall be like him for we shall see him as he is and we're predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ and be in heaven and all that and that bringing all that to it and then harmonizing it all with this love that is, uh, is far unsurpassed past anything far beyond any degree of any kind of love that we've ever seen or ever could see and 
marching toward that and using that and letting that love of Calvary that was demonstrated on Calvary harmonize all these other things to the point that they will become healing beyond anything that we could even imagine at this point. And so we're going to stop then and pray. And, uh, and we're going to pray, first of all, that God, you know, this is, that you will let this tape, you, uh, tape let, let this video uh, be seated in this computer correctly. <laughs> and uh, that it will go up on YouTube, that it will flow through, and everything will be perfect. And it won't be any 21-hour deals and all that kind of stuff, but it'll show the right time. Time and everything will work out right, and we ask in the name, holy name of Jesus, touch this camera, and touch this computer, touch YouTube, and all of it. This will all go up in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. We pray that this will go up. This is a good, a uh, lot of good truth on this thing, which uh, uh, I need to be up here today, you know. And and so we just pray God that that will work work out. And so now we uh, will pray. Yeah. Uh, as we always do for the sick, and we just pray to your God as we uh, we want to have that healing love. Dear Father, by the name of Jesus, give us that healing love. Give us that harmonizing love. Oh, give us all that. Unify all of our desires toward your power and your healing and to love for you, that we may love you. You know, like the first commandment says, I love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and body. You know, which is a good step to take, too, toward it. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and body. Woo, thank you, Jesus. And so that we may do that, that we may learn how to do that, that we may learn how to lay down our selfishness and do that. But, Father, that you will heal people of cancer. Oh, dear God, we hate cancer. Oh, dear God, that you would heal people of all the metastatic forms and all format forms of, of uh, tumors and things like that growing and thing, cancerous growths and all those kinds, kinds of things. Oh, dear God, that you would just heal people of anything that it gets under their uh, into their brain or their under their skull or anything and grows in on their brain that shouldn't be there any kind of a any kind of a foreign thing a tumor or anything else that grows on the brain in the brain under the skull of any way oh dear God it creates a, a disorder you know that you like harmony and you will bring harmony to it you know and send if you need to your holy holy angels down with their surgical ability to take everything down clear down to the quantum level that there won't be a one thing left nothing left anywhere in the body that would even uh, bring uh, an even an inkling of cancer or an ability to have cancer again oh dear god that you would heal of cancer of all kinds mm -mm -mm. And Lord, heal people uh, uh, of their uh, brain disorders of every kind. Epilepsy, that's a sad case too, that you would heal people of all of their epilepsy. You know, and that you would heal people of anything that would cause them to pass out, any kind of TIA or strokes of any kind, or any kind of momentary loss or, or blank spots or anything. Dear God, of fainting. And Lord, that you just heal people. Father, of, uh, and give them the right blood uh, oxygenization and a good circulation to their brain and uh, prevent Alzheimer's in every way. Oh, dear God, and cause their brain to function and then have the good memory to the last day. Oh, dear God, just heal people now of all of that. And Lord, give people good blood circulation now. Oh, dear God, how pe uh, so how people so need good circulation. And they don't need to have to have a lot of high blood pressure to get it. And, Lord, they don't need to have plaque in there stopping it up. And so, Lord, just take out that plaque. Wash it out and wash them all out, especially out of the coronary vessels. Lord, that, that they will have free flow to their heart and that their heart, heart muscle would be, would, would be strong and it would last many years. And all of the, all of the electrical uh, things would fire right on time. And their power and all of all of that heart would be strong and last many years. And, Lord, I would pray. We just pray now, dear God. Oh, we so love to pray. We just thank you for a good lesson. Oh, dear God, and we love all this. We love to heal. We love to pray. And Lord, just keep us doing it. Lord, dear God, don't let these uh, computers and these uh, internet uh, uh, servers and all the rest of the thing, don't let any, anything interfere with this message going out. Oh, oh, Father, in the name of our Holy Son, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. And now we pray, dear God, in the name of our Holy Son, Jesus, dear God, that you will heal people of lung problems. Father, you know, it can heal people of emphysema, of COPD, dear God, of any kind of flu bug, any kind of pneumonia, any kind of virus of any kind, including COVID-19. And everything, Lord, it could get in there. It would go in through those tubules and create problems and allergies of every kind that create problems. 
And Lord, just heal them of any kind of thing like that and restore those lungs from smoking that they may lay down those cigarette pack, pack of cigarettes and walk up from them, never come back. And you can restore those precious lungs so they can breathe the oxygen correctly again. Oh, dear God, just restore all of that, all of those burnt lungs into nice pink lungs again. Oh, dear God, now they be pray in the name of thy Holy Son, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Heal people of all hepatitis and cirrhosis of the liver caused by alcohol. Oh, dear God, that they would lay down that bottle, walk off, never come back. Oh, and that you may restore their, their, their uh, liver. And dear God, we just pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, that you would restore people of all diabetes effects. And dear God, just, uh, just give them good uh, blood sugar balance, good hormonal balance, good endocrine functions. A good balance in their endocrine system. Good. Oh, dear God, give them good balance pancreal functions. And balance that and balance them and harmonize their kidney functions that they would be perfect. And Lord, dear God, their heart and everything. And Lord, dear God, just heal them of all diabetes. Oh, dear God. Oh, my dear Savior, heal people of diabetes. Oh, my dear Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Father, I pray in the name of thy Holy Son, Jesus. Oh, dear God. Mm -mm -mm. Oh. All right. Well, praise God. We did that, but that's okay. Praise the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, that you would uh, heal people, dear God, of their uh, of uh, osteoporosis and bone problems and, and uh, uh, heal them of any kind of a uh, problem in their um, in their uh, their joints of any kind, any kind of joint pain, any kind of joint inflammation. And she would heal them of that. And Lord, dear God, and she would cause them to have good joints, good working joints, good knee joints. Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, you take them to have good hip joints. And, and Lord, you're healing any kind of fissures or any fractures in their hips. And dear God, we pray that you would just give them good, strong joints and good, strong bones and heal them of any osteoporosis and give them strong bones. That they may jump up and dance, that they may take you, may take the shackles off their feet, that they may dance in the spirit. And jump up out of the wheelchairs and run, chase the devil out of the room. Oh, dear God, throw the crutches at him and run and dance and dance and jump and dance in the Holy Spirit. Just shout it out, shout it out, shout, shout, shout it out, shout out all the fear and doubt. Oh, shout the devil out. Oh, man, in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. And she would cause that to happen for the people. And Lord, now that you would just cause people all their back problems and all to be healed. And Lord, any pain in their back, any scat, nerve pain down the body, any multiple sclerosis or, or uh, spinal meningitis, dear God, or any shingles or anything on scabies or any rashes or anything on the skin. And Lord, dear God, now that you would heal people of all heart problems and all coronary artery plaques and take out the plaque and cause a free flow of the blood, dear God, and cause them not to have stents and pain in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, give them a good, strong heart last many years. And Lord, now we pray, dear God, they all impression. That you would lift people way above depression and blues. Oh, Father, lift them way above all of that. That they would never have another moment of blues, never a moment of depression, never a moment of feeling lowly or down, low, low down. Or, oh, Father, or feeling uh, under it and, and dear God, or in the valley or any feeling of pity or any feeling, dear God, that they would have no, no, uh, uh, any feeling of being left out or being isolated or being lonesome or any of those other things. Uh, Lord, dear God, you're lifting far above that. Whether well, it's just a power that I have of joy and peace and happiness is a thousand times above anything they can get by any earthly joy. And so, no earthly joy need to present because they can be led a thousand times above that. And that you may lead them out of all oppression by any of the relatives or any of their friends or any of their peer groups or any of their relationships or any of the status groups or, or the governments or anything else. They cannot no, can any longer oppress them because we overcome through Jesus. And, and Jesus places us so far above oppression that, it, that we're just thousands of times above it. Oh, and we have the joy of the Lord to overcome all that, and that we can overcome all obsession with everything from drugs to alcohol to everything else, that you will heal people of that craving for any kind of drug and heal them of all crack, cocaine, cocaine, heroin, dear God, and, and uh, all of their uh, 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 methamphetamine uh, uh, addictions and all the addictions to fentanyl and addictions, dear God, to any opioids or addictions to any kind of Oxycontin or anything else, Lord, that they would be healed uh, and released from all that and by the name of the Holy Son Jesus, you'd heal that physical addiction and uh, cause them to real, right, be uh, rise up in your joy and your power to that joy that you have that's a thousand times above any kind of euphoria or high feeling or speedy feeling or buzz or rush or anything else they can get from the drugs. But you would lead them up to that point where they would have all that joy. They never go turn back to the drugs, never have to. And Lord, dear God, just cause it. 
Mm-mm. They give up everything else but the spirit and have that joy that is a thousand times greater than everything else. And now we pray for the leaders of our country. Mm-mm-mm. That you'd give them the strength to lead in the right direction. That they would understand what that direction is. And Lord, dear God, they would understand how that we have to have honesty, integrity, and forthrightness, and and, and uh, accountability, and we have we have to have uh, we have to have um, uh, 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 see through. Oh, dear God, uh, pray. Uh, and Lord, that we that we have to have uh, uh, have to demonstrate character and integrity and honesty. We pour everyone that we're leading in order to be good leaders, and we have to lead them in that direction. Lead them toward uh, transparency, and lead them toward uh, toward uh, gratitude for the country, and uh, realizing the thing, the blood that was shed for this country to buy our liberties and freedom, and and cause people to be grateful for that and lead in that way and, and demonstrate that and be the example of that. Oh, dear God, that they may do that, Lord. And all of our congressmen and all of our governors and all of our city and county leaders, they'll have this kind of leadership ability. We pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. And now we pray, dear Father, that you would leave all of our Sunday school teachers, all of our uh, public school teachers and all of our private school teachers and professors, that they would be uh, uh, demonstrators of a great gratitude and understanding of the what has bought the freedom and liberty of this country, that they may teach and lead in that direction and be the example of a great gratitude for the country that we live in and teaching people how to, uh, to uh, appreciate that. And how to be grateful for that and what they need to be grateful for in a correct way. And now for all of our pastors, leaders, and teachers, and associate pastors, assistant pastors, Sunday school teachers, choir directors, music directors, associate pa- uh, youth pastors, and youth directors, dear God, and elders and deacons, that you would give them a great passion for the law, a great passion for having a revival, a great passion, dear God, for evangelism, on missionaries. And all we pray that you would just bless them. Oh, dear God. Uh, that they would have the wisdom and understanding to teach and, and to lead and to lead into a, a winning lost souls. And now we pray for our missionaries, dear God, that you just protect them from all harm and against themselves and their family and bring them back home safely. With, and that they would have a lot of reward for all the many people that they brought to the Lord and the things they've done. And you keep them free of any kind of da- uh, any kind of attack or anything by anyone on, on the farm fields they're serving on or any persecution unduly. And Lord, dear God, that you just protect them and bring them back home so safely and keep giving them a passion for the lost and for passion, dear God, for that, that spirit. And Lord, now we pray, dear God, for all of our police officers, bless them, God, and give them a great honor and great prestige. And Lord, dear God, just cause them to be protected against any harm to themselves or their family by anybody who would be aggressive or anybody who would come to them in, in, a, uh, uh, in, in a corrupting and aggressive way or in a violent way, protect them from all violence. And dear Jesus, give them a rewarding career. They can look back on and say that they've done mighty things and wonderful things to preserve law and order and preserve civilization and preserve the civility of this country. And Lord, they've done mighty things for that. Be proud of that. Be proud of serving. Protect them while they serve. And Lord, now we pray to God that you just protect all of our ranchers and our farmers against any kind of vandalism, against their barns or their houses or their cattle or their horses or anything of their equipment. Bless them, the ranchers, especially down south, against people breaking in, and bothering, vandalizing their equipment, and vandalizing their barns, and all them kinds of things, and all the farmers that they'll have, and that the ranchers will have great prosperity, and have, and do, uh, in their uh, uh, sales of their uh, livestock, and will turn out good, and, and Lord, let's pray for the farmers, that they will have great prosperity in their harvest, and great prosperity in their crop, and you will protect them, dear God, and keep them, and cause them, oh, dear God, to have a great reward in the job that they do, and Lord, now we pray for all of our uh, servicemen, and uh, men and women in the Army, Navy, Coast Guard, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and Space Force, oh, dear God, that you uh, would uh, bless them, dear God, with a uh, uh, protection against any harm to themselves and their family, that they may may be able to make it back home safely, and if they're career soldiers, they would be, oh, dear God, have a great, rewarding career in that, and uh, understand that they've done mighty, wonderful things at the end to part preserving the freedoms and liberty of this country, and that we're eternally grateful to them for that. And Lord, that you just protect them and give them wisdom and uh, wisdom to to uh, avoid trouble and everything, and Lord, we just pray that they bring them back home safely. We pray now, dear God, for all of our pets, Dear God, that you would just uh, touch our uh, uh, pets with uh, the ability to, you know, take care of things correctly. And Lord, that they would not be attacked by any wild animals. And Lord, that any of our smaller animals would be, won't be attacked by the larger ones. And Lord, that everyone, they, they would all live in harmony together. And if there be any homeless 
animals out there, dear God, that you would just find them, uh, uh, find them forever homes, heavenly homes, wonderful homes where they're loved and where they have plenty of good food to eat and have plenty of places to play, plenty of people to play with, uh, not children or whatever to play with or family to play with. It would appreciate them and love them and give them all. We just pray that that will happen for them. Oh, dear God, and we pray now that God should just bless all of us. And we'd have a wonderful rest of the afternoon and evening, a beautiful evening, and a wonderful time in the spirit and the study of the word and, and study and understanding of healing and all that. And, and Lord, that you just heal people of cancer of every kind, heal people of any kind of tumor they may have underneath their, their, their cranial cavity or on their brain or in the brain or any kind of heart disease they may have infecting that and bothering their heart and causing stents and all bypasses to have to be done. That you'd heal them of all that and give them a strong heart, and strong circulatory system balance. And Lord, now we pray that you give us a good night's rest and may, that we may work hard for you tomorrow. Give us a good evening and a good night's rest. We, and Lord, just lead us and keep us. And we ask all these things in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. Oh, give us mighty blessings. May we have a blessed day, a blessed evening, and a blessed night. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' holy name. We pray amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -mm.